So here an application of doing three braze joints um, in a copper to copper environment using our FOSS Braze 5 self-fluxing brazing rod. With copper to copper you don't need to use a flux, the FOSS Braze 5 actually cleans the, the phosphorus in the alloy, cleans the copper surface and allows the braze to work. But before we actually assemble up the joint we still need to do our first most important thing in any brazing operation making sure we've got nice clean parts to join together. So this is a 22 mil copper pipe you can uh, join these together with a soft solder alloy which in a domestic environment will be absolutely no problem but in a commercial environment uh, for in, uh, heat exchangers, air conditioning, things like that, cooling industry um, the soft solder is not strong enough and robust enough to put up with the, uh, the, the rigours of everyday use. So we'll give it a good clean to make sure we get rid of all the oxide, even though these are new, newish bits of pipe, fairly clean, they all still need to be cleaned properly before we assemble them together. When we're brazing, we're actually looking for the brazing alloy to penetrate into the joint or the coupling, not up the tube. So the join is actually going to be made inside there between the tube and that. So making sure that one I don't think looks like it's been cleaned quite enough, far enough up. So just go a little bit further up there. That's better. And then for this, we're going to give that a good rub, make sure that the joints are clean as well on the inside. Uh, and we can either use a tool like this as a, as a cleaning wire brush, or we can use some webbing type uh, emery, which is quite good. You can just get your finger in um, and make sure, give it a good clean all the way around. The wire brushes are, you, are designed for a 22 mil pipe and obviously the inside of this is just a little bit more than 22 because it takes the, takes the pipe so uh, they don't get quite the, uh, the good clean that you do on the inside of the pipes. So I'm going to assemble this up, we've got no flux so it's all been assembled up dry into a T piece which is potentially the type of joint you could expect to see in, a, in an industrial application. I'm just going to clamp that up in here so that we can, uh, we can hold it. So we're going to try this with a, a, a plumber's uh, torch, which is just a propane torch. To do three joints on fairly big lumps of copper like this, we're probably asking a bit too much of it. This is more likely to be an application in an industrial environment um, for air conditioning or, or heating engineers. So they would po potentially have a little oxyacetylene bottle which gives a lot more heat. But we're gonna try this just to show you that it can be done, hopefully, um, and, and, and prove that, that if we get the heat in the right place, and at the right point, we can, we can braze all the joints together. So uh, I'm going to uh, fire this up, turn it on first. Like all our brazing operations, the first thing is to get the heat into the, into the part. So we're going to heat the T-joint the predominantly all the way around, keep the flame moving to make sure we build the heat up in the whole point. Spe especially with the FOSS brazing, you need to be patient and just keep the thing moving, keep it going and keep the heat building up. And with this type of uh, heat input, the, the propane plumber's torch, it does take quite a long time. 
We'll start by doing this top one, which is probably the easiest one because it's a vertical joint. And we keep getting the heat in all the way round. And you can see when the flame's been applied, it's clearing it back to a nice clean copper. And when the flame's moved, it's oxidizing. So we've got to make sure that we get plenty of heat into the joint and into the part. And we're trying to build up a heat to a cherry red. Whether this manages to get there, we'll see. If you haven't got enough heat, the brazing rod will not melt. It just sticks and it, it, uh, it won't work. You can use flux on a, on a copper foss rod, but the idea is that it, it makes it a much easier and quicker application. It's a flux free. Um, if you've got flux, then by all means use it because it will help keep the joint clean. We've just got it going there. Now if you've got more heat going in, you'd be able to do this in much quicker go, but just to prove it's possible. It takes time, you have to be patient. can actually get it to go all the way around. Yeah. So we'll now go on to the more difficult ones which are the horizontal joints and again I'm going to apply the heat from underneath and hopefully try to draw the brazing alloy round to the heat source. Not the ideal way of doing it, but it just proves that even with a simple plumber's torch, you can still do a hard soldered joint. And then we're going to go right the way underneath. Get it to pull itself right the way round under there. Now in an ideal world you'd be using an oxyacetylene or something with a lot more heat. But with a little bit of patience you can do it. And then the final one, which hopefully has got some heat already built in. Copper's a very good conductor of heat, so. And see how that's lumped up, it's, it's not ready yet. I've been too, too impatient. Keep the heat banging in, you see that starting to move. And when you apply the rod, suddenly it flows. Come round from on top, try and get some more heat into this. You can see it's really struggling to get the whole thing heated up but with a bit of patience it can be done and you've got yourself a really strong joint
too impatient again. But if you warm it up and let it go, it should hopefully penetrate round and into that joint. I think we're, we're pushing the boundaries of possibility with just a, a simple domestic uh, type plumber's torch and, and hard soldering joints. But that should withstand any pressures or aggressive materials that you're wanting to put through it. That top bit's not wanting to go. I'll try and encourage it with a little bit more. day yeah struggling anyway there we go I think that's about it